Hello everyone. Happy Easter season to you. My name is Reverend Dillis Esharituri. I'm a member of Van Nest Assembly of God. Reverend David Hunquist is my pastor. The theme this month is Easter. The title of this devotional is The Return of the Conquering Hero. I will be focusing on the Lord's return to the Father after he was raised from the dead. I will read from John 20, verses 14 through 17. And when she, that's Mary, had thus said, that is to the angels, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni. Hallelujah which is to say, Master. She said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. It was early. It was dark. She was weeping. She stooped down one more, once more, looking into the tomb, and she sees two angels, but not the Savior she was seeking. She turned and sees a man who asked her, Woman, why do you weep? Who do you seek? And then she says to him, supposing that he was a gardener, Sir, if you have borne him hence, Tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. She turns again to look into the tomb when she hears this man, whom she thought was a stranger, call her by name. She immediately recognizes his voice. Why did the Lord ask that question? Why did he not immediately greet her, introduce her, or whatever, just make himself known to her? Now this question was a question that produced an invisible wall of separation between them. This was done purposely by the Lord, and it is extremely important because this holy sacrificed Lamb of God, fresh out of the tomb, must not be touched by human hands until he had presented himself before the Holy of Holies in heaven where the evidence of his eternal sacrifice for sin will remain forever. Hebrews 9, 11 through 12 says, But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, hallelujah, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. This is why he said to her, touch me not. I know some translations, maybe a whole lot of translations say, do not cling to me. However, I've heard 
a Greek scholar say, the word touch used here is the same word used when the Lord asked, who touched me? When the woman with the issue of blood touched him. To me, this makes a great deal of sense, since he must first present himself before the Father, and after that, return to be touched by his disciples. And then, who else was there at the surrounding area of his resurrection? We must not think that the King of glory, the eternal Son of God, returning to the Father with the evidence of his finished work, hallelujah, was all alone. No, no, no. Could it be then that there at the vicinity of the tomb by the Lord were multitudes of heavenly hosts, hallelujah, there was the angel that rolled away the stone and sat on it, not to let the Lord out of the tomb, but to provide access to the disciples to enter in and bear record that he, hallelujah, was risen indeed, glory to God. There were angels everywhere, only revealed from the spiritual realm into the physical realm, as the Lord desired. Therefore, all of heaven was decked up, angels lining the streets of glory, singing and rejoicing before the Father as the conquering hero ascends to heaven before the throne of glory. Hallelujah. Yet, in the midst of all of this, he stops and he turns. He hears Mary crying. He comes to comfort her. Oh, what a savior. Oh, what a friend. What he did for Mary, he does for you and me. Our God loves us that much that he would take a chance to come and comfort Mary and would not rather leave her to continue weeping until evening when he would return anyway and allow his disciples to touch him, including Mary. But he took a chance in doing that. Hallelujah. When was the last time you allowed someone else's comfort to interrupt your program? We are all focused on our ways that we do everything to keep others from attempting to disrupt our plans. This is the reason many consider abortion. I don't know who you are, but the Lord is saying to you, if this child coming is interfering with your plans, the word says, do you not err because you know not the power of God. For you, it may be an unplanned pregnancy, but to God, it is the perfect time for that child to make an entrance into the world to serve his purpose. Don't be like the world. Walk by faith and you will be blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus. Holy Father, may your will be done in us always. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.